Hello and welcome to this SOLIDWORKS tutorial on advanced surface blends with me, Tim Island. In this video, what we're going to be looking through is some advanced surface blending techniques. I'm going to be looking at this detergent bottle which I've built. It's not an actual design which is out there in the market, but it is the kind of thing which you might expect to see in Tesco's, Waitrose, that kind of thing. So if you're a industrial designer or a product designer and you're designing this kind of thing, I think this video would definitely be of use to you. The first technique which I'm going to insist you use is using a patch map. Okay, This doesn't have to be a very detailed diagram like I've got up here, just a very quick sketch on paper about how you're going to blend the surfaces together and which different surfaces you're going to use. Okay, Definitely do this before you start actually jumping into the SOLIDWORKS and you'll find that this does save you time. Okay, I've, I've modelled in the past where I've gone straight into the SOLIDWORKS and before I know it I've hit a bump where I just can't actually physically make the model, it just doesn't work. Okay, and I'm sure if some of you have been surfacing for a while, you've had the same issue. So for the detergent bottle, what this patch map tells me is that these red surfaces are all one. So I've made a very basic bottle shape um, and then I've trimmed out the sides to put those green surfaces in. Okay, those blue dotted lines then show where there's going to be a curvature relationship between those green surfaces and these original surfaces, these original red ones which I've cut out. There will actually be curvature or tangent relationships uh, at the sides of these purple surfaces, but I just haven't included that on this. Those will be very thin boundaries, which we use to just blend the green surfaces back into the red ones. Okay, so let's just... Okay, so let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and have a look at the finished model. So as you can see here... Um... Okay, so let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and have a look at the finished model. Right now I've got it set to tangent edges removed, which is a good way of proving that your SOLIDWORKS model has all good curvature or tangent relations between all of its surfaces. So this is normally how I validate that my model is blended well at the very end. Now what I'll do is just go to view, display, tangent edges visible, and that'll show us each of the different surfaces that the model is comprised of. Now this first surface you can see that I've just clicked is what was red on the patch map okay and what it was originally is just a, a base surface that was the very basic outline of the bottle and then i removed this area and this area and then blended in the other bits underneath okay so this is a common surface which has been kept the same throughout the model it's just been trimmed back the next technique which I'm going to suggest you use is using layout sketches at the very beginning of your tree and then converting these entities down and trickling them down the tree that way. Just create a new sketch when you need this information, when you need those entities, and then just convert them then. But keep these original layout sketches at the top of your tree. So these are my original layout sketches and from the side you can see I've got one there as well. Um, I like to use style splines, you can probably see. So let's now take a look at what these layout sketches are. I'm just going to hide these ones. The first one is that very basic bottle shape which I was talking to you about. So that's completely symmetrical, there's nothing strange about that one and that's that very basic shape which I made originally. Next I've got these cuts okay, which overlay those original sketches. So you can see down on the left hand side there I'll eventually be creating a boundary which goes from there up here, bends inwards and meets that piece of geometry there and then comes down and at the same point here I've got that spline in place to come down there meet that piece of geometry there and come around okay and you can see as well that um, I've made the star spline so I've made this spline here sorry I beg your pardon I've made this spline here tangent to that piece of geometry up there so I've made it tangent to that spline up there so that I have that nice curvature relation coming in. And I've done the exact same thing down here, okay? So that spline there is gonna be curvature to this one down here. So it has a really nice blend on the side there as well. So there we have that first original boundary. I've then gone ahead and split that into three. And the reason I've done this is because when I make those other boundaries in the middle, I'm going to need them to have curvature relations to that top and bottom. So I'm going to need that geometry in place to do that. So this is the first one of two middle boundaries which I've made. 
as you can see it's blended into that initial surface up here and down here I've just created a similar um, profile now you can see it doesn't actually match up with the profile down, down there and it doesn't need to because in reality we're only going to be using the top bit of this surface all the rest of it is going to be cut away and the sketch which makes up its guide curves if I just edit that you can see those converted like I said um, from those layout sketches and you've got a very similar thing with the other middle surface so this time it's just the opposite way up it's blended in with the bottom of that initial surface and then you've got the profiles at the top just to blend it up to something and then we're going to end up cutting away the top and leaving some of the bottom where it's blended into that bottom surface now what I've done is just trim back that middle portion of the initial surface okay and I've done that by creating some extruded surfaces which I'll just show you now so I've used those to just trim back and again if you look at the sketch for that those are just converted from the original layout sketches in the exact same process as what I just discussed I then created some more extruded surfaces with converted entities from that layout sketch so I'll just show those there and I then trimmed back those two middle surfaces which we made for using the exact same process I then trimmed back those two added middle surfaces which I made using the exact same process using the exact same process okay using the exact same process I then trimmed back those two added middle surfaces which I've made using the exact same process using the okay. using the exact same process I then trimmed back those two middle surfaces which I made Using the exact same process, I then trimmed back those two added middle surfaces which I made. Okay, so you can see I've made some more extruded surfaces from those layout sketches, and then I've just trimmed it back to make these two. Now, those surfaces are all ready to be knit together into one clean sheet. So that's what I've done there. And you can see, instead of having faint blue lines between them, there's now a black line between all of these surfaces which means that it has an edge and if I go to my view like we discussed earlier and go to display tangent edges removed you can see those black lines disappear which shows me that they've got a curvature relation between them the next thing you're going to have to do is create those very thin boundaries in between your existing surfaces now my one piece of advice here is just fiddle around okay and don't be afraid to use a tangency to face relationship as opposed to a curvature to face relationship you'll find that you often get the exact same results with a tangency to face relation that you're expecting from curvature one anyway. And sometimes, for example, here, I've used a none relation, so there's no tangency or curvature relationship, and that one works out fine. But you'll see that I can validate that with the tangent edges removed afterwards. And here as well, I've uh, converted a sketch down to there, and I've used normal to profile. And that'll ensure that when we mirror it over, that that boundary is symmetrical as well you'll then want to knit that in now these thin boundaries can be very challenging and the bottom one was a lot harder than the top one on this particular model and I actually had to do it in two different boundaries and I had to do a bit of trimming back as well so I've made one boundary here I've had to trim that back ever so slightly knit that in and then make another boundary that goes to the end after that and finally knit that in you will find that these thin boundaries can be quite challenging and you might find that you just have to play around with them until you get a solution which works uh, trimming back things like that and often altering the tangency or curvature relationships and back to that point that I was saying beforehand don't be afraid to use a tangency relationship as opposed to a curvature one or maybe even a none you might still get the results that you want and you can always go to view display tangent edges removed to 
just check if you do have those coverage relations. In this particular model, you can see that it all blends really nicely and we get the results which we're looking for. So I've set the edge conditions of some of the boundaries, uh, including this one here, to none as opposed to normal to profile. And I'll just accept that now and show you what that does. And as you can see, it builds a hard line here. Even under, under the curvature diagnostic tool, it doesn't really look to be that bad. It doesn't really look to make that much of a difference. Um, but really, they are not curvature to each other. And you're going to see that by seeing this hard line here, even when under the um, tangent edges removed setting. So make sure you are choosing normal to profile on, um, on edges where you're going to eventually be mirroring that surface over. And that just about wraps it up on how to make that detergent bottle. Uh, don't forget, if you do make a model, add some cheeky decals, even just for fun. Why not? Makes it look good, especially when you render it, uh, like I've done here. So finally, just a little summary of some of the techniques which you've used in this video. Firstly, plan ahead. Patch maps are a brilliant way of doing this, even if it's just a very basic and rough sketch. A really good way to make sure you get the model right first time around and save you wasting your time going through methods which don't work and having to end up rebuild the entire model. Secondly, use layout sketches and then convert the entities from those layout sketches in features further down the tree. Thirdly, use the normal to profile condition when you're going to be mirroring over a boundary. It'll make sure that you get that curvature relation on the side. I'd also say know your common surfaces. So know which surfaces are going to be joined using curvature relationships and are going to remain the same throughout your model. And finally, use tangent edges removed or tangent edges phantom to analyze if you've got the correct curvature relationships between surfaces. So thank you for watching that video. I hope it's been of use to you. Please don't hesitate to comment any feedback or any questions you might have in regards to some of the techniques which you've used in this video. Um, you can get in contact with me via LinkedIn if you'd like to as well. Um, please like, subscribe to the video as well. That does definitely help my channel get up. And um, until next time, please check out my other videos as well.